Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Who look at shills, deathly stars, peasants, vassals, fear, and loathers. I'm a useful idiot. Today I want to talk about this breaking story about money bags in Afghanistan. And uh, this whole thing is so bizarre and so outrageous that it would be hilarious if it wasn't so tragic. Because essentially what we're looking at is Afghanistan is a country that now that the U.S. has created the most corrupt country on the planet Earth. It really has to be. Um, it's like some kind of episode uh, uh, somewhere between a uh, book by Hunter S. Thompson and the movie Carlito's Way. When I look at the details, and uh, so I'm going to try and present that because uh, I know everybody's getting all the gruesome details and, and all the, uh, the editorial uh, and all the stories that are breaking about this, but uh, I'm going to be a little more irreverent because this is uh, this is really incredible. I mean, there's so much that this implies when you look at these details. So I'm going to go over some of the some of the more <laughs> bizarre and uh, wild details. So of course, as we know, this is what we're talking about here is a story where both Iran and the United States have been leaving piles of money, bags of money, suitcases of money, backpacks of money, sometimes plastic garbage bags full of money outside the doors of the president for a decade. And uh, this is this is just incredible. Tens of millions of dollars. Who knows? And uh, they try and downplay the numbers, but uh, I don't have the exact person. But I remember uh, some years ago, an Afghan official was stopped at the airport with $52 million in cash uh, leaving the country. And he was allowed to do so because it was uh, not out of the ordinary and cleared by the Karzai government, of course. So that one official was squirreling out $52 million in cash. So that should give you uh, a true idea of the level here that you're probably not even going to get from some of these other stories. And uh, according to current and former Karzai advisors, this is where all this information is coming from, and both U.S. and Afghan officials. On, uh, Of course, they all want to remain anonymous, and uh, I don't blame them when you look at the details. This is uh, as sort of as a guess. So uh, Kar the Karzai chief of staff from 2002 to 2005 said they called it ghost money and uh, quote it came in secret and it left in secret unquote so I, I can just picture these guys high-fiving each other when another bag shows up at their door and they talk about their ghost money and uh, break out the champagne and uh, no surprise this cash has fueled corruption and empowered warlords around Afghanistan so essentially we have a giant crime syndicate going on here and that's why I feel comfortable claiming that Afghanistan is probably the most corrupt country on the planet right now and uh, one US official said the biggest source of corruption in Afghanistan was the United States so we have uh, we have imported this uh, wonderful product into Afghanistan and uh, this is uh, this will be our legacy and uh, another sad commentary um, in this uh, travesty. And uh, so I, it turns out Iran has been giving them bags of money too from uh, 2002, 2002 and they only stopped in last year 2012. So they have 10 years of uh, piles of Afghan money as well as 10 years of piles of CIA money. And uh, I find it hilarious that in uh, 2010 uh, of course the US accused Iran of aggressive campaign to buy influence in Afghanistan, uh, which of course is exactly what the CIA were doing, so a certain amount of irony there. And the Iranians purportedly were giving them three to ten million dollars a year as well. So there's a hundred million dollars or so from the Iranians and uh, we can only imagine uh, uh, 50, 100, 200, 300 million, who knows, um, from the CIA. Um, Afghan and a U.S. official said the CIA's main goal had been to maintain access to Mr. Karzai and his inner circle in a highly centralized government. So uh, what they're really saying here is uh, they basically paid the money so Mr. Karzai, their puppet, um, would even talk to them and all his cronies. And uh, when they say highly centralized government, they're talking about a tight-knit uh, crime syndicate uh, with uh, uh, all the... Uh, uh, nepotism, family members, uh, friends, and uh, cronies all 
getting the, the big payoffs. And, and no wonder, too, as this money filters through, undoubtedly everyone, including the handlers, all the way up the uh, food chain are skimming off the top. And uh, so everybody's getting rich on this. So that's another reason why I feel comfortable saying Afghanistan is the most corrupt country on earth because uh, this uh, whole level of skimming off of all this cash flowing into this corrupt government has to be mind-boggling to say the least. And um, so then we go on. Mr. By late 2002, Mr. Karzai and his aides were pressing for the payments to be routed straight through the president's office. Yeah, what a shocker there. So uh, he's barely in office very long and he's uh, talking about making sure all the bags of money are dropped off right at his doorstep because he, he needs to uh, distribute it uh, more efficiently. Then in December 2002, the Iranians showed up at the palace in a sports utility vehicle packed with cash, the former advisor said. I, I love that image as well, too. Um, you know, like, uh, I don't know, some kind of a gigantic uh, uh, Hummer filled with cash to the brim. That would be quite a, quite a sight. And uh, payments range from the hundreds of thousands to the millions to the tens of millions. And I'm, I'm certain that it's uh, ranged in the millions uh, nearly all the time. And uh, like the Iranian cash, much of the uh, CIA cash goes to paying off warlords and politicians, many of whom have ties to the drug trade and the Taliban. So there's yet another reason why uh, Afghanistan uh, can safely be called the most corrupt country on earth. Because not only is uh, we have this system of cronyism and corruption in the uh, highest reaches of the Afghanistan government, but of course they, uh, they're working with the Taliban and they are also involved in the flourishing drug trade. And that's another thing about uh, this whole scenario that uh, you can factor in too, considering that uh, under the Taliban, the poppy trade and the, uh, the uh, shipping of uh, heroin uh, out from Afghanistan um, at record levels uh, previous to that, and that uh, stamped out under the Taliban and is now back at record levels and we have uh, proof that American troops have been guarding fields and, uh, and expediting the, the drug trade run by the CIA and uh, the warlords and the Karzai government. So, uh, so that's another reason why um, we can safely say Afghanistan is the most corrupt planet, uh, country on <laughs> country on Earth. It's so uh, insane there; it almost sounds like another planet. Handing out cash began in, in the very beginning of the war of 2001, and uh, they bought warlords, including Mohammad Qasim Fahim, who is now the current vice president. So uh, he's been getting paid a lot of money for quite a while. And uh, one U.S. official said, we paid them to overthrow the Taliban. So that's another interesting aspect of this whole thing, that this entire war against the Taliban was essentially um, a financial operation. Um, we had uh, limited U.S. forces in there initially, and now uh, we are using private companies, mercenaries, and uh, that is a part of a, a huge expense it's going to be continue in Afghanistan when U.S. troops pull out, and um, the fact that all the warlords are paid as well. So the whole the whole game is basically the, Greek, the wheels of the, that entire war have been greased with money. Um, all the Northern Alliance and the uh, rebellion was bought and paid for and maintained the payments throughout the entire length of the war. So as this is a, a shape of things to come. It says a lot about uh, human nature, certainly. And, uh, and, of course, it, it gives me another reason to s suggest that uh, this is the most corrupt country on Earth is the fact that uh, we have all these er uh, multiple layers of mercenaries, uh, not only the warlords living it up and getting paid huge amounts, but uh, we already know about the lifestyles of these uh, private contractors and mercenaries over in Afghanistan, as well as running these uh, torture uh, uh, compounds like at Bagram, and uh, this uh, culture of, of greed and graft and corruption um, certainly degrades the human condition and uh, certainly adds to the nasty reputation that I'm talking about that Afghanistan now deserves. And a good example of uh, this 
uh, thing that I was just discussing is one warlord, Abdul Rashid Dostum, ran a CIA proxy militia and received a hundred thousand dollars a month and called and was a called the emissary of North Afghanistan. And in a 2009 interview, Mr. Dostum said, quote, I asked for a year of cash up front so that I could build my dream house, unquote. So apparently that would be about a million dollars up front. So this uh, warlord, so interested in toppling the Taliban, could build his dream house. And, um, and uh, we also know that this template, of course, exists in other countries uh, to some degree. Egypt has been paid 80-some-odd billion uh, dollars a year, I mean, $80 billion uh, annually to not uh, have a war with Israel starting back in the 70s. And, uh, and also, uh, of course, all everyone that was paid in uh, Libya and, and all the Arab Spring uprisings and uh, all the money that's filtered into these uh, the uh, Al-Qaeda in Syria. And uh, so... We're getting a really good glimpse of how uh, money really greases the wheels and it really makes the connection clear between uh, central banks and their money printing and allowing countries like the United States and the CIA to use this uh, printed money uh, to flow and grease the wheels of war around the world. And Afghanistan is a, a damn fine example of that. And um, a couple uh, stories that showed up after this story appeared, and these are Karzai's most recent uh, uh, responses to the fact that this story came out, and uh, they're really amusing in themselves. So, President Hamad Karzai acknowledged Monday that the CIA has been dropping off bags of cash at his office for a decade, saying the money was used for, quote, various purposes and expressing gratitude to the United States for making those payments. And then the other one is, after Mr. Karzai's statement on Monday, the presidential palace in Kabul said in a statement that the CIA cash, quote, has been used for different purposes, such as in operations, assisting wounded Afghan soldiers, and paying rent, unquote. The statement continued, quote, the assistance has been very useful, and we are very thankful to them for it, unquote. So the uh, droll nature of that uh, um acknowledgement that uh, the CIA has been dumping money on them for a, a decade is, uh, once again, hilarious if it wasn't so tragic. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.